where I'm sitting on the balcony where I was staying. Okay, it's cloudy now, but the turkey looks close enough to touch it. And it makes you realize why the hell, of course, if I was desperate, I'd put my family in a boat. But you'd want to be pretty desperate to do that. When I was here last year and I bought a painting from one of the refugees and I had it in my house and Mary Chataki from the Antiparis Art Gallery, she saw it and she went, aha, I will give you the gallery for an exhibition. And that's how this trip started. Lesbos 20 years ago for a quiet life. Yes. A more simple life. Didn't quite work out. It was okay for a bit, but then kind of got um, a little bit the, upset down. Yeah. Hit by the refugee crisis. In 2014, we started to notice a difference in the kind of people coming across. It was no longer just small boats of a few men. Suddenly the boats were bigger and, and they contained children, small children, families, women. And then the numbers were increasing every day. So I don't think we ever made an original conscious decision that we have to help because to us it was never a decision. As a human being, you cannot drive past people on the beach in need. I kind of came across them on Facebook through, I don't know how, and Antiparos, through me, have been sending parcels of whatever they need. And it's great because I had the contact with Philippa. I would be able to say, what do you need right now? Last year, the people of Antiparos, population 1200, we sent 160 boxes of clothes, towels, sheets, shoes, to the Hope Project. I lived here before in uh, Aya, Aya Paraskivi. About 10 years ago, there was a, there was a wildlife hospital there. And I love animals. And it was a Dutch, uh, Dutch couple. So I went up on the plane to Ayapalis TV and lived there about one and a half years. And they had in that time, Flippa had in that time, a shop in Morivos. So I entered there and there it started slowly, slowly, slowly. We haven't seen each other for years until I read that the Hope Center needed people. Not the whole project, but the whole set. Our house became the warehouse. In the garden, in the house itself. You know, you had to walk through the sitting room through pampers and ladies' towels, and we had like corridors going all clothes and stuff. People were just giving us, a lot of the tourists were leaving all their clothes, everything they just left to us, so they just brought it to the house. And that, that was fantastic because we had no help from any NGOs those days, no help from any aid agencies, we still don't. But um, anyway, and it ex escalated, and then our house became the centre because all the people, all the volunteers coming out on the tracks, they on the dirt tracks and up on the cliff faces, 
they were coming to our house getting emergency blankets, medical aid, um, people were posting us stuff from all over Europe. Um, and it, our house actually ran 24 hours a day, it never stopped. It was just crazy. We had volunteers 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, you know. We had people bringing children in from off the boat, soaking wet and we get getting clothes. And we just slept when we could, it was so crazy. And that just, it, it literally just escalated and escalated. So from a, f a few boats a week in, in November, November, December 2014, by May was more than a few boats a day that then went up and up and up through the year. I think our height was October 2015. That month, every day went from a few thousand up to the maximum of 12,000 in one day. 12,000 people in a 15 kilometer stretch of coastline. Crazy so, day now. Anyway, from there we, we carried on. And now we have this, you know, we're on four, six years now, we're on year six now. Uh, and we always thought the European community would come and help, the European disaster funds would be open and they'd come and help us and everything else. And it, it never happened. So fast forward to now, on an average day, we look after 150, 200 people a day in here. They get clothes, they get prams, they get tents, and they get everything. In the next warehouse next door, they, we have our art centre. So they can come and paint, um, they can relax. And it's nice to see, you know, when they first come to the art centre, you know, they're like rabbits in a car head, like they're like this, you know. And then after a few weeks, they settle down, and we call it the family, because we are every nationality <laughs> around the world's in here. Um, and we all work together. Seeing what goes on in the art center, I'm always impressed by how can you, when you're living in squalor, in mud, with no electricity, with nothing, in, in an utterly desperate situation, come in here every day and paint something beautiful. For them, it's their way of expressing what they're going through. So their painting actually reflects their, their experience and things. And if you've seen, some of them are a little hard to swallow and a little hard to look at. Yes, yes. But to me, to me, art, music, art should make you feel uncomfortable. It should make you question who you are and what you do, and it should have a statement. A friend, he friend me, he, t he tell me about Hop Project. Hop Project is very good, it's best because Hop Project help many people. Everything is free, we can use it everything. 
and Eric and Filippo, they are all very best. They are very good. They all helped me so much. So I gave me space to sleep. They're here and for the better now. And certainly the atmosphere in the art room is incredible. Yeah, it's electric. really calming. It's so peaceful, isn't it? So peaceful. And what I love is watch, I watched all the different refugees working with each other mm -hmm. and helping each other and mm -hmm. teaching each yeah. other. That's, the, that's why they become so special because everyone's involved. It's, it's not like going to art colleges. Or something like that. Yeah. And I've insisted this from the day we opened the art center. Everyone has to use their own mind. Mm -hmm. um, and I will advise, but I won't teach because mm. uh, I'm an artist myself. But I think they, they need to interact with each other and everyone should feel and, and produce what they want. So did you two, you, you met here? Yeah. So you are now together? <laughs> the stories, they're, yeah. they're not refugees, they're people like us. I don't know, I'm waiting for my decision and after I want to go to Athens, I'm waiting. And I love to teach the people about painting. I love it, teacher. I, I hope one day I teach it. I curse. Sometimes they make me very angry. Uh, and they know that. But we have also a sense of humor. They understand that when I'm angry at that moment, I'm just angry at that moment, you know? Most of the time it's difficult, the language can, yeah, because they don't all speak with, uh, English. And I don't speak their language. <clears throat> so a lot of times there's a miscommunication. The label of refugee is, is demeaning and it's, you know, they're humans. But when they come in here, they're not just refugees, they're volunteers. They're the cook or the barber or the um, beautician. They all have a new label, which makes them human. Yeah. Well, they have a purpose, they have yeah. a job.
had an auction. Maybe. We had an auction in uh, Christie's of London, put on an auction in, in Piccadilly. Um, and that was incredible, because not only did they put an auction on for the Hope Project and for the refugees here, they actually done an exhibition for 10 days in St James's Church in Piccadilly as well. And that was fantastic. In Christie's of all places, it was incredible. You know, they, you could see them just rising. But, but even Christie's... another emotion that mm. they never thought they'd experience is pride. Yeah, Hearty should have been in there. It, yeah. you Can know. you imagine if they could have gone and yeah. seen, seen their, their pictures own painting being auctioned? Yes. We had an exhibition that was actually organised by um, a lovely Greek artist here, Anthula. Anthula. Yeah. Um, and she organised an exhibition at the Municipal uh, Gallery back in July. Yeah. Yeah, um, that was fantastic. To watch the artists in going into where their painting was exhibited, and suddenly they're not the refugee, the immigrant, the charity case. They're an artist. They are the artists. People are asking their opinion. They're they're listening to their opinion. They're asking them questions about. It. Suddenly they're human, and yes. they are important. The reason like with having the refugees especially in this room running this project there's nothing you know as a refugee everything is demeaning everything puts you down everything destroys your dignity and, and, and a little yeah. chip off your soul every time you have to be humiliated and they are continually humiliated so what's worse than going into a place that's run by westerners and having them hand down clothes to your kids that you can't provide this is really demeaning and and it's so bad so what we're looking at is this place is run by so many different nationalities so when families come in it's actually an even thing it's not a charity thing yes they go shopping they're a nightmare <laughs> actually which i love if somebody is refusing all the clothes to me they're still a functioning adult or a they functioning still have human being. They still have pride. Pride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you'll accept anything, you've lost all, all spark, it's mm. gone. It's good to be here. Yeah. To feel to do something against all all so so you know I know very well it's it's a drop in the ocean. But without all these drops there was no ocean.